Hi guys, I just had a question from a new Turbo Tools user uh, and he wanted a bit of clarification on a few of the things that you need to do when you use it with the classroom scene. So I thought it would be a good opportunity uh, to also share this with everybody else. And it should also be very useful for people using Turbo Render with blend files that have got multiple scenes being rendered from one compositor. And I was actually quite amazed by just how fast we're able to get the render now in Blender 4.5. It's absolutely incredible. And if you've not heard of Turbo Tools, then you can check it out at uh, the Blender Market or Superhive, as it's now known, at the link in the description below. So if you've not got the classroom scene and you want to follow along, you can download it from blender.org forward slash download forward slash demo files. It's this one here. And then once you've got that, you can just drag it into Blender, open it up, and there you go. So if we go to the compositor, the first thing we want to check is if there's any missing nodes because sometimes when blender gets updated to a later version you can find you've got nodes in here that are, say the bright red and they say undefined now in this case it seems to be all working correctly so let's just set up turbo render in the compositor i'm just going to open up an image editor as well so we can see the render result as it happens i'm going to set this to render result Make sure we set the device to GPU for the render device. I don't need the temporal stabilization data because I'm not rendering an animation. So I don't need to, you know, get rid of any uh, flicker in an animation. So I don't need that. We need to set a cache location. So I'm just going to set this to Z turbo class or slash. And now let's do a render, see if it works. So I'm going to do render turbo tools, render still image. We get a message firstly saying we need to enable the compositor in order to use turbo tools. So we're going to the output properties under post processing, and just turn the compositor on. Okay. And then we'll try again, render turbo tools, render this scene's got this blend file has got multiple scenes. And what this is saying is the scene volume light as an invalid cache folder set. So in, if we go into this scene over here, let's just copy the path I've created for the cache control C go into the other scene. You can see this doesn't yet have a uh, cache folder specified. And this is because if we go into the preferences under the Turbo Tools add on, I've not yet set a default one, which is what I prefer to do actually, because I like to be notified so that I can make sure I set a different one for each blend file. So let's just close that down. And I'm going to add that in there. So Control V, and then we'll go to the volume light one and Control V in there as well. Incidentally, these other two scenes are actually using the EV render engine. If they were using cycles, we'd also be able to set individual different settings for Turbo Render in each of the scenes. And that's good because obviously, if you've got something like a volume, you can usually use much less samples. So this just it gives you the ability to set different settings for each scene. All right. So in the main scene, we can now try rendering again. So let's do render, Turbo Tools render. And now it's starting to render, so everything's fine. Give that a second. And it's going to be a little bit slow to denoise, and we're going to fix that in a second. So it rendered in 9.18 seconds. And also you'll notice that the result is very noisy. Now this is because this compositor, instead of using the denoised image pass at the top, it actually uses the individual passes to build this image over here. Now, in the turbo render settings, we've got the denoise mode set to draft rapid, which basically means those individual passes won't be denoised in the resulting cache node. It will still be doing much more advanced denoising at a much deeper level than the Odin denoiser in the render panel, but not as deeply as an individual pass basis. So what we'll need to do is set the denoise mode to ultra, and that will just make sure that all of these passes that are used to rebuild the image are going to be stored in a denoise state in the cache. Let's just also set this to uh, interior heavy GI because it's an interior scene. And we're going to come down and we're also going to come under performance and we're going to enable under compositor. If you've got this is in Blender 4.5, we're going to set the GPU to be the denoising device for the compositor. So this is going to denoise much faster. So it's going to go from nine seconds down to much faster denoise. So let's try that again, render, turbo tools render. And if we just check how many samples this is using so that we can use those when we do a test without turbo render, 
16 and 8. But if we look at this result, we've now got the individual passes denoised, which means when the compositor rebuilds this image from all of these different render layer nodes, we're going to get a nice clean result. You can see we've got noise on the clock and also on this glass here. So anything that's glass is not being denoised. And also here, we've got quite a bit of noise in the heavy depth of field areas. So let's come into the turbo render settings. And I'm going to make sure tick transmission so that gets denoised as well. And I'm going to turn on heavy depth of field motion blur as well. And this means that these areas that are in the heavy depth of field area are going to get some additional attention by the turbo tools. That turbo renders more advanced denoising system. So let's render this again. Render. In fact, let's just do a, let's store this one. Image, turbo render one. Now we'll do this again. So render, turbo tools render. So 6.46 seconds, but if we look at it now, the heavy depth of field areas have been denoised nicely. The clock's also been denoised, so anything with transmission has been denoised as well. Now for comparison, let's try doing the same with uh, turbo render disabled. So we're just going to use the inbuilt one. Hang on, let me just name this one turbo render 2. And this is going to be without turbo render. So this is going to use the default denoiser. So let's come into here and we're going to disable turbo render now and I'm going to set the samples so that to, without turbo render it's using the same samples we just used which was 0.5 noise threshold 12 and 8 for the min sample so 12 max 8 min we'll turn on the denoiser that comes inside of blender's render panel make sure we set it to use gpu so it's as fast as turbo render was and it's got the best setting. So open image denoiser is usually the better one. We're using albedo and normal, accurate pre-filter, and the quality is high as well. So let's render this again. Render, turbo tools render still image. Okay, and it's nearly finished. Give it a second, there we go. And this is the result we're gonna get without turbo render. Now this is because, if we just compare, so this is with turbo rendering, see everything's been denoised. Without, nothing's been denoised. And this is because in here, again, we're using the individual passes, whereas this denoiser here will only denoise the combined pass, the, you know, the main image pass at the top. So it's basically a noisy result. And that's another benefit of turbo render is that if you use the ultra settings, then it's going to denoise those individual passes that are used to rebuild the combined pass and then you're going to get a much you know cleaner result like this incidentally you should only ever use the ultra denoise mode if you need those denoised individual passes to be used in post-production like we are doing here in all other scenarios you want to try and use the lowest possible denoise mode you can that you can get away with because usually even the draft stroke rapid denoise mode with enhanced textures and reflections enabled is enough to give you a production quality final render. And that will ensure that your overall render time is as fast as possible. So 6.46 seconds, and this is without turbo render. 4.42 seconds, the denoising was a little bit quicker just because it's much less advanced. The turbo render denoiser was actually denoising lots of different things, whereas the, you know, this, the inbuilt one was only denoising that one pass. And that's why the denoising time was approximately one second faster with the inbuilt denoiser, um, but a much worse quality image. And there we are, so I was quite happy with that. Anyway, hopefully this will help people that are also just starting to use turbo tools, just in case there's any of those things you might run into, you're not quite sure what those little messages mean that it pops up to tell you you've not done everything correctly yet. And there we are. Well, I've got a few more videos coming up, by the way. I've just been contacted by my ex-girlfriend to do something, and I thought that would make a good video showing how to perspective match a photograph and then redecorate a room with 3D geometry so that it seamlessly integrates with the photograph. So that's gonna be a video that's coming up. It's quite an interesting one, actually. There was a few things I had to do that I couldn't do natively inside a blender. So I think that's gonna be quite interesting for a number of people. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.